Hello and welcome to Chris's Retro Corner. I'm Chris, this is my Retro Corner, and this is Max Duino Ultimate from You Make Robots. Now, I'm sure you saw the pop-up, and this video is sponsored by You Make Robots, as they were kind enough to send me this device for free, and I don't have to send it back. For those of you new to tape emulation for retro computing, in short, there are a number of solutions that revolve around the use of single board computers, or SPCs, commonly the Arduino range, and most usually the Arduino Nano, to play back image files stored on SD card of the sounds that software was stored as on old audio compact cassettes. Historically, there have been specific firmwares for these type of tape emulation devices, each one being tailored for use with just one type of system, and these work very well um, with each of their devices. These firmwares have then been developed over time and still are to further include greater support for different cassette image file types and computer systems. There have been several different key firmwares used to date and the Max Duino firmware used in the Ultimate from You Make Robots is a result of a project by developer Rafael Molina to unify two big firmwares and that's TZX Duino that originally supported the Sinclair Spectrum and Amstrad machines and then CAS Duino that originally supported MSX computers. Now, a problem arises, like myself, when you have more than just one type of system. It's true enough that you can flash the firmware in most of these SBC devices and install an alternative, which then allows you to use another type of computer. But if you swap between systems as much as I do, then soon this approach wouldn't be much fun. I said in my unboxing of this device that using Max Duino firmware works across a range of machines without the need to reflash the firmware of the device. So let's get on with testing this out on the systems that I own. So let's have a look at my Sinclair ZX81. We shall give Max Duino Ultimate some power. We should give the ZX81 some power. There we go. Um, we shall navigate to the uh, to the correct folder. There we go. I've got two. I've got two different uh, two different games there. I've got Breakout, which is a .p file, and then I've also got 1K Chess, which is a TZX. So you can see both of those working. Um, we'll start with Breakout, I reckon. So we'll load quote new line and we'll go and you'll see that this goes exceptionally quickly it's only a 1k game um, so we might as well just wait for that to load almost there there we go and we're done so we should be able to run that fantastic and that works great stuff Ooh, try again Sometimes you have to help my old telly with its tuning. <laughs> and then we'll go to uh, to 1K chess. And we'll do exactly the same thing again. So load, double quote, off we go. You'll note that I'm also using this on its highest board rating as well. And there we go, 1K chess really quick. So that's this working with the ZX81. Now let's have a look at my Sinclair ZX Spectrum 48k model. Pop the TV on. I think it's tuned into channel 2. Pop the specy on. Also the Max Duino. And I shall navigate to the right folder for the specy. And I've got two different versions um, of each game on here. So Invaders, we'll have a look at that one first. And you can see there that that's a tap file. So let's load the tap file. This might take a little while. 
So let's uh, let's cut to the good stuff. And there we go, that was the tap file version. So let's reset the specy. And then we will find the TZX version instead. There we go. Fantastic. So that's queued up. So again, we'll load. Ready to go and play. go that's the tzx if i can say it correctly um, version of invaders loading as well so yeah happy days i think i'm gonna have a bit of a go at this while this is here so uh i'll see you in a bit So let's have a look at my BBCB. Put that back in. Turn the beam on. And this time, because we've got motor control, we need to navigate to the menu, go to motor control, and turn it on. You can see that it's on just at the bottom there. Back out. Go to my BBC folder. What should I? What should I do? Uh, Monsters. Let's let's try and load monsters. So we've got that queued up, ready to go. We need tape, then chain, ready to go. And because we've got um, tape control on, it automatically starts and pauses. So we take the pause off, and the computer controls the rest. Found monsters. We shall wait for it to load. And there we go monsters is loaded fantastic stuff um if you're wondering why this is black and white it's because i'm using the composite out it's by default it's uh, it's black and white as was my electron as well and i believe if i'm right i've done a little bit of, a little bit of web searching and i think there's a relatively straightforward mod i can do to get color on the composite out on this ultimately i want to be rgb and have a, have a scart lead for it um, but i've yet to get one of those but yeah hang, hang around and come back because I will definitely colour composite mod this very soon. So let's uh, let's come out of that. Let's find a let's find a different one. Let's go for boxer. Um, sometimes you you'll need to play around with the board rate um, of the of the file. Um, but at the moment this is thirty eight fifty, um, which I believe is is a fair bit faster than the original tape loading. So it will load a little a little bit quicker. So we've got that queued up. ready to go and it's off we 
go. Box is loaded as well. What a good little bee. Okay. There we go. I think I'm going to have a quick play at this one as well. So now let's look at my Acorn Electron. Pop it on. Gives an Arduino some power. And I did notice, so unfortunately, I do need to change the board rate and drop that right down um, to 1200. So we'll leave the motor control on. And let's go and pick, I don't know, Snapper. Love snapper. So that's that's queued up, ready to go. Let's wait for that to load. So that's snapper loaded. Let's queue up another one. Let's go for hopper this time. So that's ready to rock. Let's see if we get on okay with this one. And there we go, hop is loaded as well. And again, while I'm here, I think I might just have a quick go. Terrible. So now let's have a look at my Amstrad and just see how we get on here. Ready to press play on tape. Pop our device in. Navigate to the uh, correct folder. And have a quick look down what I want to load. Spin Easy was the first game I loaded on this. So uh, let's give that a go. Tape drive's going. Play on tape. And I will speed this up because this is going to take a little while to load. And there we go, spin dizzy loaded. I'm gonna have a go while this is uh, loaded up. So you'll have to excuse me just for a little while. Okay, enough of that. Let's see if we can give something else a go. Buggy boy, love buggy boy. Right, Let's see how we get on this this one.
So, as you saw at the end there, retro computing does have its pitfalls, and my recently resurrected CPC 464 um, has decided to develop what I suspect to be a bit of a power glitch, um, choosing to reset itself occasionally with the change of motor activity. Um, my ZX81 also developed a keyboard glitch that I had to resolve too, um, so keep an eye out for these fixed videos coming your way real soon. Um, unfortunately, right now, I don't currently own examples um, of the other systems that this little device supports, um, being the Dragon, Jupiter, Oric, TRS, um, or MSX computers. Um, however, if, as, and, or when um, some of these get added to my collection, I'll be sure to try them out um, with the Max Duino Ultimate and share the results with you. It is worth mentioning here that support for the Commodore 8-bit micros is in the pipeline for the Maxduino firmware. And once that's available, I'll be able to flash the firmware in my Maxduino Ultimate using a simple tool written by you make robots, and then use this with my Commodore 8-bit micros too, using either um, the original data set and a cassette adapter like I did with the CPC 464, um, or via the likes of an MP3 to C64 audio to data adapter. Additionally, support for several other micros is also in the very early phases of development too. Um, so the list of retro micros that this device is going to support is only going to keep getting longer. So, to wrap up, I think the Max Duino Ultimate from You Make Robots, and there's a link in the description below, um, is a great investment to anyone out there using tape emulation or wanting to own just one device. Um, to use across many of their different retro micro systems. But for now, thank you for watching. I do look forward to seeing you again in another video soon. Take care and I'll see you again.